Hi, welcome to my channel Ruby Neck Crochet Tejido. Today I will be teaching you how to knit these beautiful candy cane inspired hats. They are absolutely gorgeous, they are very easy to do. I hope you guys like it and give it a try and here is the list of material you are going to need to make them. If you are not already a subscriber, please subscribe and click on the little bell, that way you get a notification each time I upload a video. Remember, I make my videos in Spanish and English. If you receive a Spanish video and you want to see in English, go to the main page of my YouTube channel that you will find the English version in there. Also, you can send me a message and I will send you the link. Even there in that uh, Spanish video that you are looking at, you can leave me a comment. Please send me the link for this tutorial in English and I will send it right there. To make this candy cane inspired hat, uh, I'm going to use this different brand yarn. <laughs> this one is from Craft Smart, value uh, 333 meters, 198 grams, 100% acrylic, medium 4, and the color is bright red. This one, the loops and thread impeccable, medium 4, 100% uh, acrylic, mm, 127.5 gram, 253 meters. And the color is white, and this beautiful green is Bernard Premium, uh, 108 grams. All these I already used before, I'm just telling you the amount that uh, you get in the jar when you buy them. 100% uh, acrylic, 329 meters, and medium 4. And the color is a spring green, and it's the perfect green for Christmas uh, netting or crochet. I'm going to use the circular needle, 4.5 millimeter from my Shea Wood set. This is the shorter cable, and this is the set. And the description box below is the link where I bought that one. And the double pointed needle is optional, it's just to finish the decrease in the top. Is this uh, small one, 4.5 millimeter, the same size of the circular needle. You're going to need a marker. And I'm going to use this one that is a round counter as well because you're going to need one. So this double as two and one. And you're going to need tapestry needle and scissor and measurement tape. This is the hat that we're going to make. I made this one for William. This one is from 3 to 10 years old, give or take. And it's absolutely gorgeous. This time I saw the handmade tags like this. It looked really cute and instead of straight or uh, diagonal so it look absolutely gorgeous I try to do the stripes seamless that you don't see you know like jockless that you don't see what uh, begins and end in the round so in this one here is where you see the most because in the other ones it's seamless and I did work in the round it look perfect if you want you can make this with a straight needle and you also the um, the two ends together to close the circumference, but it's absolutely gorgeous. You can make this any size. I'm going to make now an adult size. You can make this smaller as long as you do multiple of two to cast on because you need to have uh, for the one by one rib for the board. But it's absolutely gorgeous. The perfect Christmas gift. For this one I started with the green and then I did the, the stripes red, white and red. For this adult size one I'm going to start with the red and then I'm going to do the stripe green, white and green. So for this one with the red, remember with this one I start with the green. For the this size I cast on 84 stitches plus 1. For this adult size I'm going to cast 90 stitches plus 1. So I'm going to leave it there long enough. So I'm going to do a slip knot, so I wrap it around and pass it through the loop and pull the yarn and you have a slip knot. So I'll show you again. You see this is the tail, this is the working yarn this way. You wrap that one in the top, you pull that loop and you pass through the loop the working yarn and then you have a slip knot. Very easy. So I'm going to cast on, the long tail cast on, my 91 stitches. So if you want to make this hat 
um, is smaller you can um, you know it's smaller than three to ten years old you can cast on let's say um, 80 stitches four stitches less or 78 or 76 74 72 7 as long as multiple of two that way you get the one by one rib so you don't have to have uh, a you know like a specific amount of stitches for the hat because here for example I did a decrease just by doing two together two together two together I don't need to have the same amount of stitches on each space because it was an easy um, decrease so and also depend on the size of needle and yarn that you're using is the amount of stitches and if you take the you net tight or loose I'm pretty much a loose knitter, so if you're using a, let's say, a 5 millimeter netting needle, and then you'll have to cast less stitches, because the hat will be bigger, the stitches will be bigger, and then the hat will be bigger. And um, probably you'll have to cast some for another size, like 80 stitches, with the 5 millimeter, or even less. And uh, if, for example, you are using a 4 millimeter, you have to cast on more because the stitch will be very tight. So you want to do this hand, but smaller. You can do, for example, 76. I recommend 76 stitches or 72 for a baby. So I'm going to continue doing the cast on and making sure that all my stitches here are nice and neat and even for a nice border. I have my 91 stitches and you're gonna make sure that this is not twisted it's all to the nice and even to the inside and we're gonna close the circumference so I'm going to pass the first stitch to the right hand needle and the last stitch that I did, I'm going to loosen up a little bit and I'm going to grab with my nails <laughs> and hold in the yarn, that's why I'm going to pass it over and I'm gonna cast it off and I'm gonna do a knot. Usually I pass the stitch back to the left hand needle but this time I'm gonna leave it there. That's what I did in the green one. So I'm gonna do the same in this one. I left that stitch there and you see it's nice and tight and secure. And I'm gonna place the marker but I'm gonna get this a smaller one because this loop is a smaller for the smaller size needles. I made these markers, well, I bought these and I did the, that way they're marker and round counter at the same time, much easier. So I'm going to place it here, and I have a tutorial how to do that, I'm going to leave the link here, just in case you don't see in that video, and I'm going to start with one net, one pearl. One net, one pearl, one net, one pearl, and like that, you're gonna continue working all this round. And since so you have even num number, you start with a net, and you'll finish with a pearl stitch. I finished the first round, now I'm going to continue exactly the same. You're going to net the net and purl the pearls. Something that I wanted to mention, if you don't have circular needle and you want to do this hat with a straight needle, you can do it, no problem. You will do the one by one rep, exactly the same as I'm going to explain. 
you know, you're gonna knit the knit and purl the purl and do the stripe the same in the border and when it's time to work in this part of the hat you will knit in the right side and purl on the wrong side so it's very easy so I'm gonna continue working my one by one rib for six round with the red that's what I did with the green I did six round with the green and then I did the stripes but I was thinking instead to do two green one white maybe I'll do two white one green so let's see <laughs> so I'm gonna continue working my one by one rib and then I will meet you here when it's time to work in round seven something that I forgot to mention is if you don't want to do this uh, brim you know double like you fold it like this uh, you have to do less round for example you will do three round and then you will do the stripe because you need to do this like a, a two inch for the border and instead of this bigger size okay because you will measure the hat for example from there up so that's the little border that you do for the brim but if you do it like this double and then you do this amount of round and for example you see for a border a single border it will be like this this is crochet if you don't see in this tutorial I will leave the link this is a baby's hat and honestly don't look crochet it look like a knitted hat it's absolutely gorgeous so I wanted to mention that just in case you don't want to do this uh, like this I have my six round and a measure a little over an inch it's an inch and a quarter and that's why I mentioned if you want to do this smaller you'll have to do less round to do the stripe because otherwise it will be too wide to be a single one a single brim so what I did for that one is I left the tail in the right side because remember in this one the right side is the wrong side for the border and then I decided to do two stripe green one white two green so with the tail in the front I brought it like this to the back and I start working my one by one rib you see leaving the tail in this side because remember this and the inside is the right side for the border as you can hear my my voice a little funny is because I still have a cold and I wanted to do this hat so badly that I decided to do it anyway even my voice sounds like uh, manly <laughs> uh, I've been having a nasty cold I have asthma and everything so I'll continue with a one by one rep all the way around and I will meet you here to do the next round I finished that round I'm gonna bring yarn to the back and I'm gonna continue you see you have this open but when you close these together they will be perfect there and then when you lose the tails you don't gonna have any holes so make sure that these two are very close together and you're gonna continue with one knit one purl I said that knit is a little bit loose because remember this tail is still loose in here and then you tie a little bit to make it smaller so when you lose those tails they will be perfect and you'll have this in the right side but in the wrong side when you flip it that this will be the right side it will be perfect So I'll continue with the green, I will change to the white, the two round with the white and then the green again and then the red. But I will meet you here when I work with the white. Don't cut the green because you're going to need it for the next one. I finished the round and I wanted to mention that I keep track of my rounds. This I finished round 8, I'm going to work at 9 with the white. And exactly the same, I'm going to leave the tail in this side and I'm going to bring it to the back. And I'm going to do one knit, one purl. 
and I'm gonna leave that one there. If you like, you can cut the red if you want, but I don't, I have it there. I'm gonna bring it up in the next round. And all those tails there, you will say it look like a mess in that side, but the important side that we need to look good is this one. This will be the right side of your um, hat in the border. So that's the one that we need to make sure that look nice. And then I will continue with the one by one rib and I will meet you here for the next round. So I finished that round. And I'm going to place my marker. Not that I need it and right now because when you're working the stripes you really can tell when you finish the round. And I'm going to continue. And I decided I'm going to cut the red. I don't want to print it up. And then I will start with a strand again because I don't want it to show in here. And I think if I bring the one up, since we're working um, the one by one rib, it will show on the other side. So I don't gonna bring it up, I will cut it or leave it there and just lift it up and you have a little loop. I finished with the green and I done that stripes and now I'm gonna cut the green and I'm gonna continue with the red my one by one rib exactly the same with a strand in here that way we don't have any seam on the other side and I finished the green was um, round 12 and this one with the red will be round 13 so for this one, I did 26 round of the one by one rib in total. The six in here, the six with a stripe, plus the red with this color. So for the adult size, since I want uh, a little bit wider because it's adult, I'm gonna do from 28 to 30 round, that way is the border is a little like this wider and if you want this for a younger kid you can do less uh, don't have to be even number I like to do even number I don't know why but I like it <laughs> so you can do 25 you can do 24 23 it's up to you but for the adult size I'm gonna do from 28 to 30 round with the red I will continue until I have those done. I did my 30 round for the border and it measure exactly five and a half inches. For this one I did 26 and that was five inches for the border for the smaller size. I did half an inch more for this one. Now I'm gonna work on the stripes and the stripe will be done the same but a different way to start and this one I start with the green because I finish with the green this time I'm gonna start with the red they are four round if you're working in the round when you finish the fourth round of net will change color if you're doing with a straight needle you'll do one round on net one pearl one net one pearl and then in the fifth row you will change color for the next stripe. But since I'm working end around, I will net this for round and then I will meet you here. I finished those four round with the red. I'm gonna start with the white. I'm gonna leave the red because I, I'm not cutting the yarn. I'm gonna continue. So with the white, I do a stripes and white and then green. I'm going to trap the red in between, that way the little hole is not as big. Oops, <laughs> I lost that stitch. 
Let me try this again. I'm going to put this thread in between those two stitches. I let go of the red and I'll continue. And then when I pull that tail, that space in between those two stitches is cut. So to do the yogless stripe is in the next round where you do what you have to do to make sure you don't get that uneven round. You see, this was my first time trying. That's why in some of them you see it and some of them you don't. Okay? But I will teach you how to do that. So I'll meet you here for the next round. I finished the round. Now to do that trick, you're going to remove your marker because now the stitch is going to be moving as you work in order to have that. Now the first stitch is, will be the last stitch. And you only do this when you finish the first round, when you change color and you start with the next one. So what you're going to do is that stitch below, the red one, the right leg, you're going to put it back to your needle and you're going to knit those two together. And then you're going to place your marker. And you always do that when you start your second round with the next color, you know. In this case, it's the white. And then you're going to continue netting all your stitches. And then I will meet you here at the, at the end of this round. I finished that round and I'm going to continue for the next two rounds with the white. You don't have to do anything, you just net the next two exactly the same as you did. So I will meet you here when it's time to change to the green to show you one more time. And you see it start to look more even. So if you're doing this with a straight needle, you don't have to worry about this. You just change color, do four uh, row for a stripe. And the only thing that you're going to have a seam when you sew the two ends together. And this way you are working seamless. I finished the third round, but I want to bring up the red. That way it's easier. So if you look at this, the red is on the other side of the uh, white. So sometimes you'll have to, you know, move it around like this or over in order to have this one like so. You see, the red is on top of the white. And then when you continue with the white, you will trap the red a little bit up or oh, other color. And then you'll continue working. And then when you're going to use the red, it will be a little bit higher. I finished that round. Now I'm going to work with the green. I'm going to trap the white. That way I can close that gap. And I'm going to continue with this one. And honestly, you don't need to use marker because when you're doing the stripe, you'll come to four uh, row and you are ready for, you know, when you have four, when you want to work on the fifth, you know that it's a new color that you have to change. I finished that round. Now you're going to grab the one underneath. You see the white underneath and you're going to place it back into your needle and you're going to knit those two together. And you place back your marker if you want to. And then you're going to continue netting all your stitches for a total of four rounds with this color. I have to do this one and two more. So you only have to do this when you are finished the first round. And I'm going to start the second one. But if you don't want to do that, you just go ahead and change color and work on the round. You'll have the stripe a little uneven. But that's fine too. 
So I will meet you here when it's time to change color to the red to show you one more time. And the stripes are four round, all of them. I really like the width of the stripe. You can do five round, you can do six, you can do three. This one, each stripe measured two centimeter, that is three quarter of an inch. I finished the round, I'm gonna lift the white and I'm gonna try to build it up because it's the lowest. The green is just right there. I'm dropping at the same time and then I will gonna continue working but with the red this round. I finished the round and again you're gonna grab the green one under and you're gonna knit it together with the red. And you're gonna place your marker and you know you want to continue working. You knit round with the red. I finished that round. Now I'm gonna work with the white. I always try to trap the colors up and make sure when you do so not to pull them too much that you will make this pull up just nice and loose and this will help you when it's time to work with the next color because you will be higher up the tail will be less long so now with the white We'll continue these rounds and then I will show you one more time how to do what we've been doing and from there you can continue and let me tell you it look much better doing it this way so now we're gonna work it's a little bit big so we're gonna grab the red one under we're going to bring it up and do it together with the white. I'm going to place my marker and I will continue working this round. Like that, you're going to continue working until you have the desired length and look how nice this looks. I pulled the tail at the white that was looking too big because it was the first white and look how even that look. So by doing this, you will have your really nice uh, jockless um, stripes. So for this one, I did from the border here, I work and then I did the decrease. So depending on the size that you're making is the amount of uh, inches that you're going to do. Um, for example, if you are making this a smaller, a smaller hat for a newborn, the the length will be six inches, fifteen uh, centimeter. The three to six month, seven inches, eighteen centimeter. From six to twelve month, seven point five inches, nineteen centimeter. From twelve to three years, nineteen inches, nineteen, uh, 19 inch. From three to three years, eight inches, twenty and a half centimeter. And from 3 to 10 years, uh, 8.5 inches, 22 centimeters. But since I do the decrease, and here that will add a little extra on the top. That's why uh, for an, um, this one is supposed to be 8.5, so I did 8, and the 0.5 I did with a decrease. Uh, for this one, for an adult size, I'm going to do 8.5 in, 8 inches, and then I will add a little extra when I do the decrease. So to measure, so you always, if it's uh, supposed to be, let's say, uh, 7.5 inches, you work 7 inches and the 0.5 you do in the decrease. Just uh, half an inch less you work and then um, you'll continue with the decrease. So for this one, for example, I will fold in here to know from where you want to measure. Let's say from there. Right now I hardly can fold it because I don't done enough in the top. And let's say 
you will measure from the border, not from this. You will come here and you will measure and you see I have 5 inches done. I have to work for 3.5 inches at the stripes until I have the length and then I start the decrease. And you'll continue with the same sequence. You'll do uh, 4 round in red, 4 round in white, 4 round in green and, and again. And you know, and all over again. And look how different they look just by changing, using the same color and by changing the brim. Look how different the hat looks. So I'll continue working when it's time for me to do the decrease. I will meet you here. Remember for this one, for an adult size is 8.5 inches that you have to work. And for this one, I work for 8 inches. Here I have the length that I need for mine. Eight and a half inches. So I finished with the red, like this one I finished with the green. I did exactly 10 stripe as well, but since I did this with more um, round for this one, that's why only with 10 stripe is enough for my length. Instead I have exactly the same, but look, look at the difference in size. So now I'm going to continue doing my first round of decrease after I did my fourth round with the red. That's how I finish. You can finish with any color, don't have to be exactly the same as this. I'm going to start doing two together. Two together. Two together. Like that, you're going to do this first round. I'll decrease. You can cut this too because you don't want to end it anymore. Just leave it till to lose later. I finished the round. Now I'm gonna do a round of net with no decrease. Just net all your stitches. Another round of decrease. Two together. And I start to get a little bit more difficult to do the decrease because the cable start to get a little bit shorter. But if you're working with a straight needle, it will be fine. <laughs> You'll do the two together, two together. Always do the decrease with a straight needle in the right side of your hat. I have to use my little silicone tip, <laughs> finger tip, in order to continue with this run of decrease. Since I cast on so many stitches, I had to do one more round of decrease, and that's why I recommend the double pointed needle in order to do it. But by moving the cable, you can do this as well. My, my, the tip of my finger hurt from pushing. Now I'm going to do the last round of decrease with the double pointed needle. But you, if you like, you can leave it like this and just pass it through and pull. But for this one, I did one more round of decrease and that's why I look like this on the top so that's what I'm gonna do with the, these ones
Now you're going to secure all those tails. I'm going to come to the inside. And you're going to secure that one. These two. And the two from the beginning. These ones. And you'll have these going up. It's no straight because remember we were moving the stitch to have a jockless uh, stripe. So it will be like that. Sideways. And then these ones, this tail, you're going to go to the outside of the hat and you're going to lose those tail in the right side of the hat. That way when you flip the wrong side out, it's nice and neat. Well, I finished my hat and look how gorgeous they look and how different just by changing the way uh, you start the color of the yarn. Um, it's amazing. Just by doing that, they look perfect for Christmas gift. <laughs> Very candy cane inspired. So if you like, you can do another one with this color, but just start with the white and do the striped red and green and the rest the same, finish with white and they will look amazing as well. Uh, they are perfect, perfect Christmas gift. I'm gonna show you in the back and you see, you don't see the beginning and end of the round and in here, by doing the sewing in the right side, the inside is perfect. When you flip it, you just see it a little bit in here, but that is the best that I can do for the stripe and the one by one rib, but it's not that bad. You know, when you put it on and this open, you don't wanna see that. So uh, to me, it's perfect. I absolutely love these hats. And I hope you guys like it. And the best way for you guys to show the appreciation for my work is by giving a thumbs up to my videos and comment and share my video with friends and family. That way you help me grow here in YouTube. That is um, the way the algorithm of YouTube work. The more like, the more share, the more comment, they will share with more uh, netters and crocheters in YouTube. And the same if you do any uh, of my work and you want me to share your uh, picture in my blogs, you can send me those pictures in my YouTube channel, Ruby Necroche Tejido, or my Instagram, Ruby Necroche Tejido. And yes, please share my video with friends and family and in groups. Anywhere that you can share, please share. And uh, that way it will help me grow. I wish you have a beautiful day. Bye. Something else, if you are like, you can do a beautiful big red pom pom in this one, a beautiful green one in this one, and if you make the next one a beautiful big white pom pom, they will look amazing as well.